Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. I've been seeing some articles and celebrations for Star Citizen hitting $300 million in funding as of the middle of June 2020. However, that funding by my count is actually closer to $425 million, and I want to talk about that in a bit of detail. Star Citizen hit $300 million on its funding tracker on the website. That's for ships, vehicles and extras from the website but it's actually raised a lot more than that. So beyond what's available on their website as a single purchase or pledge as they call it, um, there's some other stuff that we can see in the 2018 financials. So they've got a few other sources of income, the RSI voluntary subscriptions, they're not tracked on the funding tracker it doesn't seem, and there's also other income from partnerships incentives like AMD, Intel and other sponsorships that aren't shown on the funding track but are shown on their financials. So please take these numbers with a little guesstimate of salt as we only have them accurately up until the end of 2018 and I'll link the source material in the article below. RSI subscribers were last shown at generating 3.3 million-ish a year for the end of 2018. I'd expect that to hit maybe 3.5 million in 2019 and maybe on its way to 4 to 4.5 million by the end of 2020. That doesn't sound like a lot when you compare it to how much Star Citizen has already sort of like um, gained in funding, but when you add it all together throughout the years, it looks to be probably about $20 million. Cloud Imperium's other incomes that we mentioned previously, they totaled almost 29 million by the end of 2018. I'd guess that's another 8 million in 2019 looking at their figures and $4 million so far in 2020. So in total, that's another 41 million added to that. So there's also some private investment money that they've generated. So Cloud Imperium received 46 million in investment from Clive and Keith Calder, well-known figures in the UK music industry in exchange for 10% of Cloud Imperium Ethereum's shares in 2018. At this time, the business was loosely valued at half a billion dollars. March of 2020, the Calders invested another 17.25 million, exercising a one-time option to purchase further shares in the company at their original price. Cloud Imperium said that one of their major uses of this investment money was for marketing, and Cloud Imperium have actually been putting together a marketing department over 2018-2019 and to date, which seems to actually be paying dividends potentially, especially with the amount of money they're now raising. By my estimates, Cloud Imperium, so Star Citizen Squadron 42, all that sort of jazz all together, has raised over 425 million to date from all sources that I can find. And that's to fund both their games, Star Citizen and Squadron 42, and I suppose the studio as well. This is a staggering amount of money, but it's very much being utilised by Cloud Imperium to make their games as they're spending what they are making on devs, on investment in their business. They don't appear to be drawing dividends or anything like that. You could argue that maybe Chris and Erin and his family's sort of like um, wages might be too high, but we don't have an accurate source of exactly how much they are earning uh, as wages, but uh, they don't appear to be drawing anything out as dividends or anything like that. Star Citizen financial success is a mixture of their marketing with ship sales, their open development and regular updates to their playable alpha. It's also a big amount of community engagement and interaction, but also a lot of the drama that's happened with Star Citizen seems to have catapulted them more towards financial success rather than damage them at all. Star Citizen made $15 million in May 2020 from pledges. Well, that's the most they've ever generated in a month, and since November 2019, Star Citizen has been making more money in pledge funding month on month compared to previous years. In fact, twice that of months, the same months in 2019, and almost six times of what they made in May 2019 in May 2020. And I'm going to be very interested to see their 2019 and 2020 financials when they release them. This is not just an explosion of funding, but also a major acceleration, it seems. When you look at Star Citizen's development process, it's sort of like been made on these longer term investment plans in regards to their software, their company, their engine. They built a studio starting with 13 people in 2020. They're now at around 600-ish people with five studios around the world. They invested in tools, pipelines, and tech for their engine. This has also led to a lot of feature creep and a very slow development process. A argument you definitely could make here is that CIG maybe should have invested in making their own engine from the ground up. 
rather than just heavily modified the cry engine and then lumbiard engines to what they now deem the star engine cloud imperium have also invested in turbulent one of the studios they work with by purchasing 25 percent of their shares they manage their website forums um help build spectrum they do their community tools for them help create the star map and assist with sale campaigns and new ships this is interesting as well because cloud imperium have actually started moving away from all the other sort of external contracts and contractors and companies where possible, bringing it all under their own umbrella. Previously, Cloud Imperium had contracted lots of companies like Moon Collider, Behaviour, Ilphonic, uh, various concept artists. So this is like all a mixture for um, AI and building the FPS modules originally um, and stuff like that. But they've been bringing more and more of that under their own control internally. They even have their own sort of like mocap rigs. They are still hiring more employees despite the lockdown. Their company's still sort of growing and there's even more potential now with the possibility that employees are more likely to work remotely in the future even after lockdown because that's quite cool. I think like the the company rather than having contractors it can just have people working remotely that means they can keep them under their sort of umbrella but still save on office space and some people might work more efficiently from home as well this type of development and the way that cloud imperium have built star citizen and sort of like marketed it does seem to be working really well for them financially we have a major update on the horizon for the end of June with Alpha 3.10. That might start paying more dividends when it comes to playability and accessibility of the game. I think that's what a lot of backers like myself are, are hoping for, that it's going to be a, a lot better accessibility-wise, less crashes, less problems with deployment. 3.9 had terrible problems with its deployment and accessibility, people not literally not being able to log on or get access to their ships and stuff uh, for a good portion of May. I'm also interested to see what's happening with the face wear face over IP cameras, as well as the Star Citizen HOTAS control devices that got canned. Uh, I would, I'm not sure if we're going to see Star Citizen HOTAS in the future now, maybe in the far future, who, who knows. Um, there's lots of other cool ones like Verpal. I love Verpal um, for their um, Constellation Delta. I think it's one of the, the best HOTAS I've ever used, if not the best. Uh, and the Facewear VoIP cameras, I would expect to see them in the future as far as I'm aware. They're still being made by Facewear for the best possible face over IP experience in Star Citizen. Just not sure when they're going to go on sale. Also, Star Citizen has started to cross over more to the mainstream, it seems. Over the last few years, Star Citizen has received a lot of criticism from the media, but this only seems to have got more and more people watching and involved with the project. Even the Crytek versus Star Citizen lawsuit that was settled earlier this year seems to have helped Star Citizen image throughout that drama. Drama means more money for Star Citizen, it seems. And as Squadron 42 gets closer to reality and other space games like Elite Dangerous get more updates, even getting space legs, it actually seems to show that there's a thirst for space MMOs and the combat genre for space sims and that sort of stuff. Theatres of War, the new Star Citizen game mode, could further appeal to gamers if it's actually good and polished when it goes live. There are no hard release dates for Squadron 42 or Star Citizen yet. Star Citizen continues to receive a major alpha update every quarter, but it's going to be at least three plus years away from a live release of any kind and probably more than that. With Squadron 42 stuff we're waiting on CIG to actually release some updates to that roadmap to explain where they are with the development of that at the moment and we're sort of like having that development obscured at the moment. Hopefully we're going to release in 2021 uh, but we are waiting for CIG to update us on that which hopefully should be later this month. But what do you think? Do you think that 425 million is an insane amount of money or do you think it's reasonable for a project of this scale and uniqueness do you think star citizen will continue to accelerate in funding are you excited for squadron 42 and star citizen or do you think this project is far over sort of feature creeped and bloated blah, 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 that's going to take a billion years to complete whatever your thoughts i'd love to hear from you in the comments below every month we have a ship giveaway for june it's for an Espirit of our and prowler dropship and star citizen game package kindly supplied by cloud imperium just comment on any of my videos made during june to be in for a chance of winning that. Oh, what's that? What am I shilling for this month, you ask? Well, the same thing I shill for every month. Uh, if you need a VPN, then check out NordVPN. It's a cheap, fast, and has a load of benefits over free VPN services. Consider it for security, privacy, protection, content accessibility, and even to help with bandwidth limits. You also get a shipload of money off via the links below. I am Nord Gamer. 
I was going to go with board VPN, but that didn't sound right. Um, Nord Nordgamer sounds perfect for my shillingness. Also, if you're looking for a gaming PC or a gaming PC upgrade, instead consider Shadow. It's a subscription-based service that starts around uh, $11 or £12 or some euros, and that streams a Windows 10 system to your device, be it another PC laptop, phone, or TV using the powers of the internet, and there's a wide range of hardware to meet your needs. It means you don't have to maintain your own rig, so if you dream of 4K gaming and you don't want to break the bank, it's an option. All their services are very suitable for Star Citizen, but there may be a waiting list based on what country and state you are in.